Hi, this is Dan Heisman, Philly Tutor for Chess FM. This is the Improve Your Chess video series for ICC members. We're going to continue our series of puzzle videos. Uh, we're looking at puzzles that are not necessarily in the opening or deep in the end game, although we, we might touch on those areas. And we're doing four different types of puzzles. So in keeping with our previous videos, we're going to show you a kind of play and win or play and mate kind of puzzle. Then we'll show you a is the move safe puzzle. Then we'll ask about a what's the right plan puzzle. And finally, we'll do kind of a miscellaneous board vision funzy puzzle. And as my directions in the previous videos, uh, the best way to do this is once I explain what the requirements of the puzzle is, you can pause the video and think as long as you like and try to come up with the right answer and then come back and I'll explain it to you, which makes a lot more sense than me sitting here quietly for three or four minutes. Uh, that way you have as much time as you want and we're not having a video where we just sit here for three or four minutes. All right, so let's get to our first puzzle. It's right here in front of us. Uh, in this puzzle, uh, it is white to play and win. And one of the reasons I picked this puzzle, this puzzle had appeared in a couple different books. Uh, the one I got it from is Massetti and Mess's 1001 Chess Exercises for Beginners. And a lot of these books have misleading names. I guess the author didn't always come up with the names. For instance, this book is for beginners, and yet I found a lot of the puzzles challenging. And I picked this particular puzzle because the first time I saw it, uh, I struggled with it a little bit. Um, a lot of these, quote, easy puzzles, if you've seen the idea before, something almost identical to it, then you just look at it and go, oh, is it this idea? Yes, it is. Okay, here's the answer. And this one uh, kind of falls into the category of uh, I didn't well, wasn't able right away to kind of understand what 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 the quote easy idea was. All right, so again, this is white to play and win. And if you'd like to pause the video, go ahead and do that. And when you think you have the right answer, and I would check it a couple times before you restart the video, then come on back and we'll take a look at it. Okay. So how do we get the answer? Well, clearly the big seed of tactical destruction here is that Black's back rank is weak. Um, you know, he's got the possibility of being mated here if White can get to the back rank. Of course, if White plays the immediate Rook C8 check, then your board vision should tell you that Queen takes C8 <coughs> is... Um, sufficient. And that also tells you that even though the white queen is attacked, if you try a move like queen takes d5, it doesn't do anything because moving the rook from the e file to the d file uh, doesn't deflect the queen off of c8. So we need kind of a different idea on that. Well, um, what can white do? So, well, suppose white does nothing. If he plays a5, then black says, okay, I'm stopping the mate. I'll take your queen. How did that help you? So doing nothing is clearly not the right idea. Um, so white has to try something where he can try to make some progress. Well, he can't double on the c file to create any kind of threats because the pawn can just take the queen. Um, so it looks like he needs to do something else. Well, suppose we play queen h5 trying to deflect the pieces. You know, these kind of moves often solve the problem. Well, checkmate in one, that'll, that'll tend to do it. So that, that doesn't work. All right, and of course that means a lot of random moves don't work. You know, if white plays, uh, you know, queen almost anywhere except taking along that diagonal, then, you know, even if he threatens this mate with queen c3, uh, queen g2 is mate. So that that is a pretty good hint because it narrows down what white could really try to do here. So queen takes d5 doesn't work. If he plays rook to c8 check first to deflect the queen, that really doesn't do anything. Um, obviously, if he plays a move like bishop to d4 to try to deflect the rook, then simply bishop takes f3 and the mate's still guarded. So, So all these basic ideas just don't work. Well, what can White do? Well, let's start looking at ways that White can try to get the rook to the eighth rank. We, we looked at queen h5 and we saw that got mated, but that's not the only move that might do something. And finally, I came up with a strange move, g4. g4 simply blocks 
the queen from stopping the mate. And it also threatens to play queen takes h3. And strangely, black has no defense against both those. If he takes the queen with either the bishop or the queen, then rook checks, rook e8, rook takes his mate. Um, if he, you know, plays h6 to stop the mate, white simply takes the queen. And really, black has not much he can do. If he deflects the rook with check, white takes. And now black's got all the same problems. You know, take the queen and rook to e8 is mate. Now, in a real game, you know, these moves like rook e1 check very often come in. But here, of course, it's a puzzle and it's going to have an answer. So the answer is the very strange g4 idea, which is the reason why it took me a little time to solve this the first time I saw this puzzle, because I don't remember calling, seeing a puzzle that was extremely similar to this before. I mean, I've seen a lot of back rank mate problems, but not quite like this. So uh, when I did that, I said, hmm, I may be a master, but uh, I don't think I've ever seen a problem quite like this. I've seen problems obviously vaguely similar, but not, not, not nearly similar. Okay, so that's our first puzzle for the day. So let's go to our second puzzle. All right, this is an is it safe puzzle. And this is a puzzle about Zwischenzugs. And white has just played knight takes d4. He's captured an, a knight on d4. And clearly black can just take back e takes d4 and keep everything even. But black has a second move he might consider. And that's this Vishenzug, bishop h3, threatening to play checkmate on the next move. And when white gets out of the checkmate, then black can always take the knight later. So a lot of people want to show how clever they are, and they always play moves like bishop h3. But as I tell my students, moves like bishop h3 can be really good, they can be really bad, or they can be really neutral. In other words, good might mean they really force white to do something bad before black gets to recapture. Neutral meaning white stops the mate, then black recaptures, and so what? And really bad meaning, oh, when white stops the mate, it actually does something better for white, and black shouldn't do that at all. So that's your, your puzzle this time. And the question is, is this Vishenzug, bishop h3, uh, neutral, good, or bad for black? And again, you can stop the video and come back and we'll take a look at it. All right, well, clearly, as I said, black can just take the piece back. Well, we gotta make it black smooth, that would be helpful. Uh, black can just take the piece back like that. So the question is, can he do better by first playing bishop h3? Well, let's look at all the ways that white can stop the mate. White basically has three moves. He can play bishop f3, he can play rook f2, or he can play bishop b5 check temporizing. All right, so when I first saw this puzzle, it became apparent to me that the best way to play this would be to play bishop f3. Why is that? Well, I simply wanted to open the e-file so I could set up a little trick. And now white is up a piece, so black has no choice. If he wants to get the piece back, he has to try e takes d4. And my student actually got this far in the game, and now he played rook checks, which looks like a natural enough move, but I hardly looked at that move. The move that I had analyzed, and I analyzed this pretty quickly, was you should check with the queen. Well, why? People like to check with rooks because they figure, well, I can, I'd rather pin the bishop or with the, the rook or something. But here, that's not the idea. The idea is removal of the guard on the bishop on h3. What's the guard on the bishop on h3? Why it's the pinning piece, the queen on the g-file. So here, the queen would have to take the queen to save itself, and when the rook checks, unfortunately for that bishop on h3, if he goes back and he gets out of check on e6, he moves right into a pin and he loses the bishop anyway. But any other move of getting out of check uh, also fails. So it turns out that I was right that bishop h3 is a bad move because bishop f3 e takes queen checks which is a double attack but it's also a removal of the guard queen takes rook takes check and wins the bishop a few years after I first saw this puzzle I gave it to one of my students 
and he actually found a second answer. He said that Bishop checks would win here. And the reason's easy. Suppose black gets out by just moving the king or something. Um, first of all, he, he can't put the bishop in the way because we simply trade bishops and then save our knight and we're up a piece. So that's out of the question. Um, if he moves the king, white would simply play a move like queen to f3, threatening to win black's queen. And if black trades, white will simply take back with a knight and there's no extra piece for black to win. If black instead plays c6 and hits the bishop, then still for the same kind of reasons, queen f3 wins. Um, for instance, if now black plays queen takes f3, uh, white has a pleasant choice of how he wants to do this. The simplest would be simply to play knight takes. And now if black tries to win his piece back, white will win the piece. And if black saves the piece, then white will take it. And white has all kinds of good options here. I'm sure he could have played other sequences that would leave him ahead. But it turns out that not only does bishop f3 easily refute bishop h3, but bishop b5 check does too. So there's two reasons for that. So if you're one of those players that every time someone takes a piece, like knight takes um, d5, let's take that back and put the knight on f3. Well, I'll show what it looked like beforehand. So, so if you're one of those players who goes, oh, I don't have to take the knight. I'm going to show everybody how smart I am because I can, I can come up with a Zwischenzug. The answer is, yeah, well, tricky moves uh, very often fall in the same category. They could be good, bad, or neutral. In this case, the tricky move is bad. So showing everybody how smart you are by playing really fast when you don't have to or playing tricky moves when you don't have to, well, sometimes those are a sign of uh, something. Uh, but often they're not a sign of wisdom. They're a sign of... Uh, just being careless. So be careful when you see these, uh, you know, tricky moves. You know, I always tell tell my students if somebody attacks something with something worth less, like let's say a pawn attacks your knight, probably 93, 95, 99 percent of the time, you should just move the knight. <laughs> Don't look around the board for all kinds of Zvishen Uh Sometimes simple is best. Uh, I think that's like Occam's razor or something. The simplest solution is often the best one. Okay. That's our second puzzle. Let's bring up our third puzzle. Examine. Okay, this is the what's the right plan puzzle. And we've been getting these puzzles from Chris Ward's book, It's Your Improvers, It's Your Move. Uh, this is number five one. So I'm gonna read you the five plans and you have to pick the one that's closest to the best plan. All right, the plans each person has a name starting with A, B, C, D, E. Sometimes I just like to call them A, B, C, D, E. All right, so plan A. According to A, taking control of the solitary open file should be the priority. After one rookie one, white should be prepared to double rooks on the E file. That's plan one. Plan B. B believes that there is little future for the white rooks on the queen side. The entry points on the E file also appear to be adequately protected. Therefore, he proposes advancing his kingside pawns and hopefully using his rooks in this sector. C. C likes a4. His view is that a6 is pretty forced. When the sequence a takes b5, a takes b5, rook takes a8, rook takes a8, rook e1, we'll see him having taken the stance on the a file in order to take control of the e file. D. D feels that black's space advantage provides him with a very minimal edge. To guarantee a draw, D advocates the sequence a4, a6, a5. With the queen side sealed off, the likelihood is that the rooks will be traded on the e file and the point will be shared. E. E has seen this sort of thing before and believes that white holds the upper hand in view of the tension on the A file. He proposes to play A4 and after A6 the sneaky rook A3. It is possible to double rooks only while the pawns offer cover there and the likely result is that white being able to infiltrate the A file with a rook or two. All right, so let's go through those five plans again and you get the chance to pick the one you like. Plan A is rook E1 and doubling rooks on the E file. Plan 2 is advancing kingside pawns and using your rooks behind the kingside pawns. Plan three is to play a4, a6, a takes b, a takes b, rook takes a8, rook takes a8, rook e1, controlling the e-file. Plan four is a4, a6, a5, shutting off the queen side where black has a space advantage and then going for control of the e-file. 
And plan five is a4, and after a6, just play rook a3, and maybe double the rooks behind the, the pawn break. All right, so again, you can stop the video, figure out which of those five plans you like, and come on back. All right, well, let's read what Jeff has to say. Sorry, Chris has to say. I always say Jeff because there's another person I've heard of named Jeff Ward instead of Chris Ward. So 5-1. All right, so let's go to solutions to problem five. And he says, um, Eric's plan is clearly the most ambitious, E. He says, after a4, a6, rook a3, he said you could also play rook a2. a4, you're threatening to take the pawn. So notice here, suppose black just plays rook b8, then you play pawn takes, rook takes, rook a6, and you get a lot of pressure here. You know, you can double your rooks, you can bring your rooks behind the weak pawn. Um, this pawn is isolated and subject to attack, so so just guarding that pawn with the rook isn't all that good. So normally black's going to play here, and now taking the pawn takes all the tension off, so what white does is he, he lifts the rook on the A file. Now, if black ever takes here and white takes, black has the same problems again. White will play like rook a5 and double rooks and hit these two pawns with a tremendous advantage. But black has a problem. If he if he does nothing at all, let's say he just uh, you know plays h6, rook doubles, and now he can't play h5 because pawn takes, pawn takes, rook takes, rook, wins a rook. Well, he doesn't have time to get his king over against that plan. If he double goes to double rooks himself, sorry, uh, white plays rook a2 instead of playing h6, black plays rook, e, rook d7, rook doubles, rook doubles. Then on pawn takes pawn, he still can't take back because of rook takes rook, so that doesn't help either. All right, well, what else could black do? Well, black could, um, let's take the move back. Black could go to the e file. But then when white doubles, what's black going to do? He doesn't have time to double on the e-file himself. Again, if he takes and white takes and he guards the pawn and white goes here and black goes here, white can now play a move like b5 and this pawn is pinned. So black's in big trouble. So counterattacking there doesn't work. So the right idea is for white to create the break move with a4 and then play rook a2 and double rooks or rook a3 as he says and that's plan e so if you picked e the fifth choice then that's the right one and black has difficulties defending this position if we go back to the start so this is a pretty you know common trick to know you know you you play the break move but then you don't tag you double behind it all right so if you've never seen that idea before Hopefully you learned something. There's a million of these little micro strategies that you have in chess. And of course, knowledge is not the be all end all of chess, but knowledge is extremely important. I've estimated, <coughs> excuse me, in some of my shows that, uh, you know, maybe chess is two thirds skills and abilities and one third knowledge, but one third still pretty big chunk. And if you get someone who has a lot of skills and abilities and they develop them really well and they never develop any knowledge or never pick up any knowledge, uh, they're not going to compete with the big boys and vice versa, of course, people who just read a lot of chess books and they have terrible skills. You know, they're not very good at analysis. They're not very good at, at evaluation. They're not very good at visualization and so on and so forth. Uh, having all that knowledge isn't going to help you very much if you haven't got developed skills. All right, let's get to our last puzzle. This is a the last one is a switcheroo, which we saw before, but for those of you who don't remember what that means. A switcheroo is where you can switch any two pieces on the board, and I mean any, <clears throat> and create a legal checkmate against the black king. So any two pieces. So, But they, it has to be a legal checkmate. By a legal checkmate, we don't mean it's a, it's a real checkmate. We mean that you could get to that checkmate position in a game. All right, so again, you can switch any two pieces on the board. You cannot leave the position illegal. You can't switch pawns to the first or eighth rank. But here, that's not a problem. There's no pawn. There's no pieces on the first or eighth rank to switch pawns with. 
So you don't have to worry about that. Can you switch kings? Absolutely. Kings are any piece. So you can switch white pieces with white pieces, white pieces with black pieces, black pieces with black pieces. Um, anything like that is okay. All right, so again, you're going to switch any two pieces on the board and leave black an illegal checkmate. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so you can uh, turn off the video. And when you've got the answer, come back and we'll do it with you. Okay, now I haven't solved this puzzle because I thought I wanted to do it with you, and I'll show you how I do it. All right, so there's two basic ways these puzzles can be solved. Either you're going to move a white piece into a position where it can check the black king, or if that doesn't work, you're going to move the black king in a position where it's checked by a white piece. So let's start with the first thing. All right, let's start with moving white pieces where they can check the black king. Well, the first one we'd like to do is we'd like to switch the queen with the knight on e4. That seems to cover all the bases. The problem is, and this is not coincidence, that that's not a legal checkmate because both kings would be in check if we put a black knight on c4. So therefore, switching the queen and the knight on e4 uh, does not create a legal checkmate. Both kings can't be in check. So what else could we check him with? Well, let's look for pieces that are a knight move away. The only piece that's a knight move away are the queen on c4 and the knight on f7. So let's switch our knight on f2 with the knight on f7. And that's not checkmate. The king has squares. Let's switch the white knight and the white queen. Does that do it? Well, that looks pretty promising. If we put the queen there, we, that now all of a sudden covers all these squares. And we put the knight over here. OK, so has this solved our problem? Well, it's looking very promising. Um, nobody can take the knight. You obviously can't interpose a knight. The king can't go to any of these squares. So that looks like that's it. It looks like the answer is to switch the queen and the knight on c4. Now, we, we don't want to have a second solution, so we could try some other things just to see if they work. We could switch the queen with the rook. No, the king can go to f4. We could switch uh, the white rook on e2 with the rook on h5, but then he goes to f4 again. Looks like f4 is sort of a problem. We could switch the bishop with the pawn here. That would cover f4, but it wouldn't cover f5, and knights could go in the way. So switching the bishop on a4 with the pawn on c7 doesn't work. And I think we could keep doing this. We could switch the uh, rook on d2 with the rook on d5, and he still could go to f4. So it's looking more and more like, and we can't switch a pawn in and check him. Now we'd have to we'd have to check all the places where we switched the the black king out. There's not that many squares that are under attack. We could switch it with the knight on f2, but then the king could go to f3, or the knight could take the rook if we switch the king on e5 with the knight on f2. So it's looking more and more like the solution we found fairly quickly is also the only solution. All right, so. This is called a switcheroo, and again, this comes from Jeff Coakley's wonderful books, Winning Chess Exercises for Kids, Volume 2. Um, this is actually one of the easier switcheroos. We, the one we did last time was also relatively easy, I think. But these are very good. They help you develop your board vision, and they help you develop your tactical vision. Now, if I sat here and said, these are the only puzzles you should ever do, switcheroos, and you'll become a great player, well, that's a bunch of baloney. That doesn't make any sense. But on the other hand, to say, well, to do 98% of your puzzles to be white to play and win, white to play and draw, white to play and mate, and to do no, you know, only 2% or you know, puzzles, something like this, that's very reasonable. I found when I was getting better that, that doing puzzles like this helped me understand how pieces coordinate, how I can manipulate pieces, how I can do things, and definitely helped me come, become a better chess player, appreciate you know, the power of the chess pieces. And when you understand that, then you get better. In fact, the subtitle on my very first book, Elements of Positional Evaluation, was How the Pieces Get Their Power. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed today's puzzle video. Uh, this is our third one for ICC and Chess FM. This is Dan Heisman, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.